The New York Gubernatorial Debate, sponsored by CBS2 and WCBS News Radio 880. Here is your moderator, CBS2's Marsha Kramer. From the CBS Broadcast Center, the candidates for governor of New York face off to discuss critical issues facing nearly 20 million people. Welcome to the one and only debate for the highest office in the Empire State. Joining me is Rich Lamb from WCBS News Radio 880, along with the candidates, Governor Andrew Cuomo and Republican Mark Molinaro. The first question, because there was a toss, will go to the governor. But gentlemen, first, a quick review of the guidelines. There are no opening or closing statements. You'll have one minute to answer a question and 30 seconds for rebuttal when warranted. And Governor Cuomo, as I said, you won the toss, so you get the first question. All right. Here we go. For many, the cost of living in New York State is just too damn high. Why can't you trim the $168 billion budget and give people some tax relief? You know, big businesses often cut their budgets by 5% to save money but not hurt their core functions. So would you commit to doing that and pass the savings on to your taxpayers? Yeah. Uh, well, first, thank uh, WCBS and uh, 880 for sponsoring this debate. I heard that line somewhere before, it's just too damn high. It's just too damn high. I can't remember where I heard it. Uh, you are exactly right. The cost of taxes, the cost of doing business in the state of New York is just too high, and it has been for many, many years. The formula is simple. If you want to lose weight, eat less, right? That's the formula. It's just hard to do it. It's the discipline to do it. Uh, what we have done over the past seven years, Marsha, is we have cut state spending to the lowest increases in modern political history. Our increases are now down to 2%. That is lower than any governor in modern history. Lower than Democrats, Republicans, George Pataki, who called himself a conservative. We're down to 2%. That allowed us to cut taxes. Middle class taxes are now down to the lowest level since 1947. Corporate taxes, 1968. Manufacturing taxes, 1917. But that's only half the story. The real state tax are the property taxes. It's three times the state income tax. And we have to get local governments to control their property taxes. For example, Dutchess County, my opponent over seven years raised property taxes 58%. That has to stop. I passed a 2% cap on counties. The 2% cap on counties Governor, and the state cap is making a difference. But I have a follow-up question before we get to Mr. Molinaro, because you keep saying that you've cut government spending, but it still goes up. And what we're asking you to do is to commit to spending less, period, so that the money can go to taxpayers. Look, I am been accused in the Democratic and you have 30 seconds. I've been accused, as you know, in the Democratic primary, because you were there, and I think you accused me, of being uh, too fiscally moderate because I have the first spending cap in the state history. Uh, only 2%. Think of it. My rate of spending is less than George Pataki, who called himself a Republican conservative. I am always working uh, to reduce cost further, get those taxes down. We have to. But three times the taxes come from the counties, and that's what we have to focus on. And we're going to let Mr. Molinero respond. Absolutely. Thank you all for, uh, for hosting us. Uh, Governor, were that only true? Uh, in fact, uh, your budgets have increased spending at about an annual rate of 4% each year. So despite the fact that you continue to suggest that you've been able to hold the 2%, you haven't. And what you've talked about in trying to drive down local property taxes is dishonest. This state for forces more state spending onto local property taxpayers than any state in the country, which means local property taxes, school districts, counties, towns, villages, fire districts are arbitrarily high because you have not been willing to take on the responsibility of driving down those costs. I'm committing today, as we have during the campaign, to reducing property taxes 30% over five years. It's achievable. It's possible. If only Albany were to control the spending and reduce what it forces down onto property taxpayers. Now, as far as it relates to my record, it's nice to talk about what happened 20 years ago or 15 years ago, but in the last seven years as Dutchess County Executive, uh, we've been able to streamline county government, we've modernized and delivered efficiencies, and we now have cut property taxes each of the last four years. And on Monday, I release a budget that, count, that cuts property taxes for the fifth straight year in a row. Mr. Yeah. Molinaro, the time is up. Rich Lamb has the next question. Mr. Mullen, can I just make a uh, comment because he sure. accused me of 
uh, you're making up numbers again like you make up facts all no, the I'm time, not, sir. right? Uh, there is no 4% increase. It it's is. been 2%. It's been documented. You were in the county legislature for seven years. You increased, voted to increase property taxes 58%. I didn't live with it. You were in the county legislature sir. for seven years. Let me finish. You it voted to increase property, uh, you, county spending 45%. That's where the taxes come from. No, sir. County sir. government and county Mr. government Mr. Spending Mr. The, 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 the governor the now has monopolized back. two minutes, uh, and he's now Mr. in. I'd like to rebut They Mr. aren't, Mark. sir. And the reason that county spending increased during those years, with all due respect, is because this state government, before we imposed finally a Medicaid cap, continued to force state spending until. Excuse Medicaid me, sir. Let me finish. Reduced your spending. No, it didn't. Cap going no, up. no, it just no, sir. It okay. did not. In 19, I, listen. You could make up numbers if you wish, but I served during. The, in the county legislature, sir, your spending. governor, first of all, the years that you're referring to, you were not governor. I, I've been in office since 1995. Let me finish my thought, sir. We have we were able to hold spending in, in county government, but mandated expenditures continue to rise. Now, to the same point, we also saw economic growth at that time. So the average tax bill for Dutchess County taxpayers, while I was a member of the county legislature, decreased. But over the last eight years, we've seen total economic stagnancy, which means communities aren't getting the assessed valuation growth and property taxes yeah. aren't going that's, down. That's, that's, I will commit yeah. to 30% reduction over you five years. Move, you're going to move you on. Rich, taxes, Rich has you raise next cell question. phone taxes, you raise utility taxes, you spend more, you call yourself a fiscal conservative, you're a fiscal fraud. I've done more fiscally than Republican conservative governors okay. and you know it. Governor, we have to move on, Rich Land. Right. I'd just like to get a question here in here edgewise. Uh, Mr. Molinaro, your Republican Party's hallmark is tax cuts. Your Republican president just got tax reform passed, passed, passed that impacts New Yorkers most negatively, greatly reducing state and local tax deductions or SALT. How do you explain that to the New York homeowner who owes thousands more in taxes? Now, I explain it today as I did uh, when the bill passed. I, I opposed the SALT deduction cap because it did put us, uh, certainly high tax states, at a competitive disadvantage. It also abandoned what had been a, a commitment since the Civil War. But the problem in New York is that we tax too much. We force too much spending onto school districts, onto towns, villages, and counties. And even in the, within the city of New York, property taxes continue to make us less competitive. Competitive. And the governor has done nothing to reduce the cost in able, enabling us to reduce property taxes. I will. The other is we identify ways in, in our Empire Freedom Plan that we would provide real relief to taxpayers. This state uh, taxes you in incrementally. So if you make a dollar more than a tax bracket, this state penalizes you for 100% of your income. I say that's inappropriate. And by changing that tax law, we'll provide meaningful relief. At the same time, with all due respect, the governor over the last several years has been threatening Republican members of Congress all across the state of New York. I want to work with Republicans and Democrats to get the SALT deduction reestablished, restored, so that we have real relief for New York taxpayers. Yeah. Governor, your rebuttal? The, I've worked with Democrats and Republicans for seven years. I passed seven budgets on time in a row. That hasn't happened since Governor Nelson Rockefeller. I have no problem working with Democrats and Republicans. I do have a problem with what my opponent represents and is happening in Washington, these extreme conservative, divisive people who are anti-woman, anti-LGBTQ, and it's just anti-New York. It is just not true to say I support half of the SALT bill, but not the increase on the New York taxes. Okay, That's, gonna... Excuse me one second, Motion. this is important. That's how they pay for the tax bill. When you say you supported Trump's SALT bill, I you put your political Governor, loyalty... Governor, I've never said that. I've never you, said it, and you continue to lie about it. You just said you did. I said that I opposed the, the, the cap on SALT deductions. Please, I've said it now you multiple times. You can't support half a bill. You know that. That's how we finance the, the tax cut for the rich, was by taking away our deduction. That's how the bill worked. You're a legislator. You can't and say, I support half the bill, but not the other half. I've never half. said it, Governor. Okay, we're going to move on now to another question for Governor Cuomo and the ever-popular MTA. Governor, since the MTA uses four times the number of workers on subway projects than any other city, for efficiency's sake, you clearly have to slash labor costs to make scarce dollars go further. How will you do without angering the unions who support you and also avoid a strike? Now, I want to point out to you and ask you, is it acceptable for unions to have jobs like nippers who watch materials being moved around and hog house tenders who man the break rooms? 
I don't think I've ever met a nipper. <laughs> I don't think I've ever met a hog. But they exist. What a hog. What were we On the MTA called? projects. Under 2nd Avenue Subway and other projects. What was a hog what? Hog house tenders. Hog house tenders. Uh, Do you see, really need those kind of I, I jobs? Thought, I thought I knew what I was talking about. The, uh, obviously, there's going to be waste and abuse in these uh, in these programs, and we can do better. Is it acceptable? Look, of course not. And uh, you've watched my performance for seven years. So how do you rein in the unions? I'll tell you. No one, first of all, uh, there have been unions that have been mad at me for seven years. You know it very well. The most powerful unions in the but state have been the mad at union. me. Yeah, the most powerful unions in the state have been. I have no problem angering a union when it comes before, between doing the right thing by the people and doing the right thing by a union. I am the most aggressive building when, uh, governor when it comes to building in the country, 100 billion, new J JFK airport, new LaGuardia airport, new airports in Rochester, Syracuse, Albany, etc. I will take on the MTA. I have no problem ducking responsibility. It's a question of funding. The mayor doesn't want to pay. The state legislature, my opponent, voted against $7 billion in MTA funding. You need the funding. The, my opponent endorsed my plan, but it's about the funding, okay, and we need the up. money. Mr. Molinero, how would you get the unions to get in line and to cut jobs and to cut waste? First of all, the, the governor has abandoned responsibility for the MTA, and we've seen it in a total death spiral over the course of the last several years, with on-time rates uh, declining, uh, with those living with disabilities not being able to access subway platforms. We see the continued delay, and it hurts real people, Governor. And the political game that you continue to play with the city of New York... But how does, do you do it? How Marcia, do you do it? The political game game that continues to get played with the city of New York means that no one's solving the problem. First, take ownership. The, the, st the state of New York is responsible for the New York City transit We're system. For a solution. Period. Absolutely. So our plan is this. First, take leadership responsibility and wipe clean those people who are in leadership today uh, that have entanglements and conflicts of interest. And then you identify with the unions that there are significant savings that can be had. And by achieving those savings, we'll share it with the, union, with the unionized employees and with the users and invest in the system. We have to make the system function, and it isn't. It's the lifeblood of the city, and this. And the governor said it just now. He said it just now. The problem, <clears throat> the problem with the MTA is it needs more money. We pay eight separate taxes to the most bloated public authority in the world, and users, riders depend on the system, which means we need to make it effective, efficient, Mr. Mueller, and less of taxes, expensive. I, my, my colleague here has right. a question for you. So, may I just go one thing? Just to is this how correct we're doing the record? It? Just to correct the record. Just as facts matter. <laughs> once in a while. Uh, what, what my opponent fails to answer is, you're not going to find this money, Marsha, in just cutting the waste. It's $30 billion. No, I'm sorry. And no, I'm it's sorry. Yes. To cut but that's what we need. But what you just acknowledged is that even $1,000 means something. But you know, you declare yeah, a state. You declared. Well, you didn't. You just said that, 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 that we're not going to find the savings. But there were. No, I said you're were, not going to find $30 billion the, to fund the plan. It is, first of all, it, your MTA costs five and six times more to lay a mile of track than it does anywhere else in the world, which means we're wasting dollars and the savings need to go back into the system. But, Governor, what is equally important is that uh, when you declared a state of emergency to solve the problem, it's gotten progressively worse. That's, and at the same time... That's not true. It is Once true. Again. And at the, same t at the same time, we know there were hundreds of employees brought in uh, to work on, on, on the MTA and nobody knew what their jobs were. There needs to be accountability. Taxpayers and consumers and communities deserve it. We see the deterioration yeah, of our that is, not true. Well, that is not true. You have never seen a Gentlemen. governor take more responsibility for the MTA than I have. Yes, I know. I declared the state of emergency. You never saw George Pataki go near it. I'm and not you know George it. Pataki. You I seem know. obsessed with him. Uh, but my but point, I, but governor. Well, because he's another Republican but and governor, he, is, he is a point. But governor, you I rushed the, the second emergency act. action plan. I said to New York City, pay half the funding. They refused. I went to the state legislature. I got the full plan funded. Performance is increasing. It is not so. And when you were Ridership. in the legislature, you voted against $7 billion in MTA funding, and that's why we are because taxing where more, we are today. taxing people more the is not question. the answer, Marcia, until and unless the state takes responsibility for the waste, the abuse, and the lack of accountability. You rushed the opening uh, of the 2nd uh, Avenue subway, and the fi they didn't have fire alarms in the system. So my point with you, Governor, is it's about establishing the outcome
outcomes and of focus on fire alarms. You wouldn't have gotten a building code. They you didn't. Can, you need to fight I waste. Mean, it's not 40, 30, or 40 billion dollars. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so the next question actually is going to go to you, Governor Cuomo. I thought he was getting the next. I know, question. but you guys, you just you you but what erased is him. Which the whole you erased the, him. Oh. So here we go. People sometimes call the state's ethics commission, whose initials are J Cope. They call it J Joke. It's been said the state's current ethics body lacks teeth to fight corruption. Would you support putting control of the state joint ethics commission in the hands of the independently elected state attorney general, New York's chief law enforcement officer? Uh, the the AG, which I know because I was the attorney general, already has uh, jurisdiction. J. Cope is the first time the legislature agreed to an outside body to do any ethics review. But is it, it was really always, outside when it's all appointed by yeah, the legislature? I'll, I'll get to that. It was always purely internal. The legislature said nobody has a right. J. Cope was the first time you had an outside entity. I agree that... It was a good first step, and I believe in the thin edge of the wedge. I believe we need more independence on Jacob. I believe so we need... So what form does the independence take? A, a totally independent appointees and not necessarily representatives of both of both houses. Them. I'd be open to a number of configurations. Like? But they have to be independent. You right now appoint six. I'd have the attorney general involved. I'd have the chief judge involved in appointing the members. Uh, we started and, you know, change starts with the thin edge of the wedge, but now we have to have more independent We're going to get, let Mr. Molinaro have a, a rebuttal. Governor, you have led the most corrupted state government in America. Eight individuals closely associated with your administration are now uh, going to jail or have gone to jail for federal corruption charges. At what point after eight years of being in office do you take responsibility or at least admit you either, either, either you have, have benefited politically from it or you have no clue what's going on within the administration? There are, th this is this is what is stealing from taxpayers. You have allowed individuals in this administration to defraud taxpayers. And anywhere else in America, no governor could possibly be running for re-election. And Marsha and Rich, the, the point is that at the end of the day, corruption steals from real people. From real people. You raised $101 million over eight years Molinaro, in exchange for $50 yeah. billion dollars worth of time state expenditures. And, time okay. is up. And Mr. Molinaro, you get the next question. Thank you. Well, uh, no, no, okay. Marsha, I have to have a rebuttal to what he just said because it was false and it was all ad hominem. Uh, 15 seconds. You got 15 no, seconds. Marcia, this was ad hominem and it was serious. Uh, for you to say in your situation to point fingers, yes, people in my administration made a mistake, they went to jail. Your county legislature is calling for an investigation on you for kickbacks and perjury where you give a contract to a vendor and then a family member got a job and they got another contract that's your own county legislature asking for a criminal investigation of you so i wouldn't point fingers i find that entirely ridiculous and by the way governor is it not factual it is listen governor what's not factual let me finish my thought my sentence yeah. we're not going to First of all, what you described has been demonstrably proven false, false, sir. And, and it is highly, highly hypocritical at best for you. Your chief assistant, Joe Percoco, making phone calls from your this very is your office. your family member Let putting me money in your pocket. This is a bribe or a kickback it is you not, took. Sir, it is not. You've had, it's been demonstrably pr proven false. And, and Rich, I'd like to finish this. Did the money go in your pocket? No, sir. I have no idea what you're talking about. Are the Tinkerman employees? salary didn't go in your pocket after you had given them a contract and then no, gave sir. them a second contract and no. they didn't fail to disclose it? Marcia, you Marcia, no, no, the, 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 the governor has a question. The governor levied, leveled a charge and he has been now speaking uh, almost uh, without, uh, with, with, without uh, pause. Just tell me what's false. Well, Joe Percoco making 800 phone calls from your very office. Exchanging yes, he made phone calls. He shouldn't have. While you were there, sir. How about Let you me kick finish. Back? Is, this, is this where we do all day? No. Let me finish my thought I before you finish I understand about it. Joe Percoco. This is about you Elaine. and me. You're right. No one's saying I did anything wrong. They're saying you took a kickback. Gentlemen, let me stop this. Right, me, Will you both change play to play? Yes. 
Yes, How? the day. How? Oh, come on. The governor established a Moreland Commission, and it was supposed to root out root out corruption. And when it found it was going on in his own administration, he canned it. I will absolutely reestablish a Moreland Commission. I will ask people like Zephyr Teachout and Preet Bharara to serve. Mm -hmm. I will use that as the tool to hold back the forces in Albany who think it's okay to defraud people. But, yeah. sir, your administration, eight, nine individuals now found guilty. You can't possibly expect the voters of the state of New York to believe that you had no idea. The, the exchange of state-funded taxpayer resources for campaign contributions, Crystal Run getting $25 million worth of state aid yeah. for a project already underway in exchange for campaign contributions. Sir, it is highly ridiculous yeah. you know to think for a moment you know that you are people, going to change that You now. know why the people would believe it? Because it was a two-year investigation, and every U.S. attorney said I had nothing to do with anything. I did absolutely Stop nothing what they wrong. Said. Meanwhile, you're the one who has been called on for an investigation for you a kickback that went into your pocket. That is not true. Where you had a family member employed by a contractor who you gave a contract, and then you lied about it on the disclosure form. And you cannot deny it. I sure and that's can. a crime, my friend. Uh, uh, sir? You, and that's you, Crystal that's Run. Not Joe, Sally, Jilly. Jo it's Mark Molinaro. That is untrue, sir. Yeah. I, gotta, it's I untrue. have to leap in with a question for the governor. So, Governor, we all see the tragedy of homeless people living on the streets every day. Many suffer from mental illness, yet police are prohibited by state law from removing them except under the most extreme conditions. Would you support changing the state law to allow police to take homeless people off the street against their will to get them help and shelter for their safety and the safety of others? Rich. Uh, I've worked with the homeless population, as you know, all my life. It's a very difficult issue, uh, and there's two sides to it. It's the legal side of when do you bring a person in against their will. That runs right into a civil liberties and civil rights conversation that is very important to all New Yorkers. The law says when the weather reaches a point where you could endanger their lives, then you can bring them in. I believe the problem is uh, they're smart. They don't want to go into the shelters because the shelters are, are unsafe. If we make shelters safer with more services, people will come in. They don't want, I've talked to them for 20 years, they don't want to sleep on a park bench in Grand Central. They really don't. But the shelters are unsafe. And that's where we have to focus, making the shelters safer with services so we get the people out of situations that they don't want to be. Governor, your time is up. Mr. Molinaro, do you have a 30-second rebuttal? I, I think I get a minute to answer the question. I, I, I would hope. I mean, I... Uh, no, what, what my we know, question, what we need you to get a 30-second rebuttal, I think, is the rule. What we need to invest in are the mental health services that have been dismantled over the course of the last two decades. That means ensuring that those who live on the street have the support of state and local governments. And what Albany needs to do is to coordinate our response. That means crisis intervention training, mental health first aid. It means uh, making sure that those who are struggling with addiction, mental illness, have the support structure necessary. Certainly, shelters need to be safe. But at the same time, the governor has allowed the dismantling of mental health services, uh, uh, people finding their way to the streets when they really need help. And what we do in my county, and I want us to do statewide, is a comprehensive response to really strike at the stigma related to mental health and provide long-term support. At the same time, Marcia, it, mean, it means we also have to ensure that we help those those who are living with developmental disabilities, their population has skyrocketed in homeless shelters, and we need to support yeah. those and individuals as well. We one got, we second, got, we just at one second. This is so hypocritical for you to sit here and acolyte of Donald Trump, mini me of Donald Trump, who is decimating health care in this state, taking health care from poor people, cutting Medicaid, cutting mental health services, removing health insurance from close to one million New Yorkers and say the answer is more health care service. Okay, Mr. Molinaro, I, I, 15, I, 15 seconds. I'm surprised seconds. it took him this long to go there, but sir, I've been in elected office for a very long time. I was in office before you. I was in office before yes, Mr. Trump. You're a lifetime your, politician, your, we know. Your private, your private law firm represented Mr. Trump and his real estate interests before state agencies while your father was governor. You accepted $60,000 from Donald Trump and have, haven't returned it. You, when you were trying to make friends with the president, 
when he first came to office told him you wouldn't run against him. And you, sir, had him at your bachelor party. I didn't. So at the end of the day, sir, I have a long record of committing to help those who are most vulnerable. I grew up on food Are you stamps. saying you don't support Donald Trump? I'm saying that I'm absolutely committed to the delivery of Do mental health services. you support Donald Trump? Let's get out of this conversation. Do you support sure. Donald Trump? I support anyone who is going to effectively make an investment. Do you support Donald Trump? Mr. Do you support Donald Trump? Mr. Molinaro, you, you can't have, answer it. You, you, have uh, you have answered it because your ad on TV says, I vote conservative for Mark Molinaro and stand with Donald Trump. Today, so you may as well have today, said it here. Today, under, under this president and this federal government, America has the most competitive economy in the world, and New York State lags say, behind. I support Donald Trump. I support every I'm effort. Just tell I the support truth. every effort to ensure. Just say, I support Donald Trump. I, I support every effort. Effort to make uh, that this president wants you to won't invest. say you support okay. the president. Gentlemen, Amazing. gentlemen, I we're going to move on. Mr. Molinari, you get the next question. It's about cash bail. Should New York State eliminate cash bail for low risk criminal defendants like California and New Jersey already do? The argument is that cash bail discriminates against poor defendants who must remain in jail awaiting trial while the wealthy walk free. Opponents say that changing law gives a judge too much discretion regarding the defendant's flight risk or danger to the public. Where do you come down on this issue? I, I think the judiciary does have to have a degree of, of discretion to ensure that individuals who pose a risk to society or themselves uh, don't uh, end up out on our streets, which uh, is, a, is a major concern all across the state. It's one of the reasons, uh, by the way, that, that I think law enforcement has a real concern about, about this governor's parole board and his willingness to pardon the most violent offenders uh, in, in our society. In fact, when he should have spoken up uh, about an individual who killed a cop, uh, he chose not to. In fact, he pardoned he pardoned that individual. But Marcia, in my county, and what I believe needs to occur statewide is we have to invest effectively uh, in the appropriate uh, uh, representation at the time of arraignment, the time uh, and throughout the judicial process. We need to ensure that individuals who are trapped in the criminal justice system have a support structure so they can find their way back to society and not return uh, to uh, to jail. Uh, we do that in my my county. Over the course of the last uh, eight years, this governor has forced more and more burden on to local jails across the state of New York, forcing them to grow their population. That's not a way to reform okay, the, the criminal justice up. system. The governor, you yeah, get 30 my, seconds. If my opponent has a fact, makes, this, uh, makes a factual statement, it's by mistake. Uh, I did a, disagree with the parole board's release of Herman Bell, and he knows it. Why did you pardon this him? This is a pure... I Why did you pardon him? Yeah, you I gave did. him a conditional pardon. It's, you didn't... You wouldn't agree to meet with the victim's an independent, families. It's an independent board. You could very which, well... You should know if you read the law. Number two, Why the Trump administration's him? entire point of view. They are anti-woman, they are anti-LGBTQ, and they want to put more people in jail for lower level offenses, which is what my opponent supports, and that's the exact opposite direction. I've been closing prisons. We and don't need to throw away young lives on low level drug crimes, alternatives to incarceration, rehabilitation, and Stop spending $50,000 a year on a prison cell and get a person into a more productive service. Governor, thank you very much. Rich? So, Governor, your mass pardons of ex-cons has generated controversy because it restores their right to vote at the polls. Some of those pardoned are sex offenders whose polling place is often a school. Should this program be re-examined and should people convicted of sex offenses be allowed to vote only by absentee ballot? The... Uh, point is, these are people who are on parole, who have served their time, they've been released. We're now trying to reintegrate them into society. And we spend a lot of money trying to reintegrate people into society so they don't uh, commit another crime and there's not more recidivism. Giving them the right to vote after they have done their time and paid their price to society is a way of reintegrating them. Sex offenders should can only a uh, vote in a supervised situation uh and i would be against allowing a sex offender to go anywhere near a situation where there are children mr molinaro except you allowed exactly that to happen Twenty-four thousand individuals conditional pardon many of which were sex offenders rapists murderers and you you not only allowed them to vote you encouraged and instructed the probation department to register them to vote and to instruct them that if they vote in schools they can vote after 7 p.m you, you did so without yes, going without to the, children then. You, 
there are no children in school after hours? When's the last time you, 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 taught, you, you took your kids to school? Yeah, My kids are in school after hours all the time. But, sir, you allowed that to happen. You allowed that to happen, and it shouldn't have happened. In, in, if When I'm governor of the state of New York, if you kill a cop, you do not return to society. If you are a sex offender, you do not get That's to... That's not you, the law. You don't, it, you, don't run the, the, you don't run the parole board. It's it, an independent it's entity. Current, or are you rebuttal? saying that you're going to interfere with an independent Current entity? Current law says if you kill a cop, you do not return to society. There is a slice of individuals that oh, you then have you're allowed. going back to the death penalty. I would absolutely... Yes, if you kill them, they won't return to society. No, you're right. <clears throat> you pardoned 24,000 individuals and allowed them the right to vote, and it shouldn't have happened. After parole, yes. No, after not after they parole. They were on parole when you pardoned yes, them. Yes, when they, after they did their time. And to allow. And we're trying to reintegrate them. How do you reintegrate somebody if you don't even let them vote? Yeah. Or do you want just a recidivism cycle so they go back no, and back sir. and back? No, sir. You allowed 24,000 people through a conditional pardon, many of which were sex offenders. To, you instructed to them to vote. To have the right and, to vote. But you should have gone to the legislature. Is there no law you're willing to, to, to not bend? To go to, to the legislature when? So like when you were there to and you took $70,000 in expenses, almost double your salary, one of the highest uh, people taking per diems. Go to you in the legislature? No, thank you. Sir, you have raised $101 million. You took $70,000. Nine individuals now found guilty of $70,000. You took $70,000. Oh, you out. didn't take $70,000 in per diem, Mr. Fiscal Conservative? You say one thing, you do another. That's not true. All right, we're both taking a time out. The next question is for Mr. Molinaro. The cost of health care is out of control. Would you support a single-payer health plan, which some call Medicare for All, knowing it could double the entire state budget of $168 billion, requiring massive tax hikes? Can New York afford this program? Uh, New York cannot afford this program, not to mention the state of New York has a hard enough time getting the trains to run effectively in the city to put the governor or, or the state government in charge of health care would be frightening. In fact, in this case, uh, the, the, the governor's already begun to auction off sections of health care. In the case of Crystal Run, a private health care provider in the Hudson Valley, uh, this state of, the state of New York, after private meetings with, uh, with their senior uh, officers, dedicated $25 million of taxpayer support in exchange for thousands of dollars of political contributions. We have seen a broken system, and I am not willing to allow that uh, to be corrupted. And Certainly, New Yorkers cannot afford doubling their personal income tax to support a system that is just not sustainable. Yeah. You let have 30 seconds. Let me tell you why uh, my opponent wouldn't answer the question. He's with, with Mr. Trump. There should only be health care for rich people. He voted against the health care exchange when he was in the New York State Legislature, which ensures 4 million New Yorkers. Donald Trump just said he wants to allow... Uh, the disallowance of pre-existing uh, conditions uh, and end the funding for the Affordable Care Act under Obama. They think if you're rich, you should be able to have health care. If you're poor, good luck. Don't get sick. Okay, Marcia, your time Marcia. is up. Rich? I'd, 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 I'd like 15 seconds. Okay, you have it. I grew up on food stamps, sir. My mother struggled hard. I know exactly what it's like to be waiting on line for you Medicaid services. remember what it was like. Don't. I remember exactly what it's yeah. like. Well, and I, give I've, seen your, I've seen your government dehumanize people waiting on lines for Medicaid all across the state of New York. I've seen kids that need developmental de disability services. So you services. want to end it? I absolutely am committed to not only uh, supporting the, that population, but expanding services, and I always have. For the last... For the last You'll eight expand years, Medicaid? I will absolutely do more to ensure that... You'll deliver expand Medicaid. I'm going to write that down. That's news. Sir, I will absolutely do more to ensure that the system more effectively assists those struggling and those who are poor because I've never forgotten where I come from. I wasn't born on third base. I worked hard to get to this very place. Yeah, neither was I. Okay, Rich, so, next question. Governor, opioids, pills, and heroin are killing people throughout the state. Do you support opening safe needle injection sites? where addicts can also be approached for help. Do you have any other bold ideas to address the opioid crisis? You are, yes, we do have bold ideas on the opioid crisis. We're working on a new model because it is very compli complicated and it's comprehensive. It is part of what uh, Mr. Molinaro was talking about before. It is a mental health issue uh, as well as a substance abuse issue. Sometimes there are behavioral issues. Uh, people are coming into emergency rooms, they're doing ad hoc determinations in emergency rooms, depending on where you go is what referral you get. The safe injection sites are something I think we should look at. 
They are very controversial. They are very complicated. The federal government uh, is decidedly against them and could close them down. But it's something we have the Department of Health working on in concert with New York City. Uh, uh, abs absolutely not. We, we cannot give up on, on these individual lives. Opioid and heroin addiction is the public health crisis of our lifetime, and we are losing. We are losing so many people. That means for us as a state, we ought to ensure that we train a law enforcement to respond effectively. It means expanding access to Narcan. It means ensuring that we have 24-7 mental health services for, for folks all across the state of New York. Every county needs the ability to provide mobile intervention team, a stabilization and recovery center so that folks have the support that they need. But what's most important is that we have to have an open conversation about the struggle that so many addicts have. That means recovery coaches. That means training and, and enhancing the tools and resources for families so that they know that we're on their side. We have to break through to ensure that we address the stigma and provide ultimately the help that these people are struggling so hard deserve. Governor, there's another drug question I'd like to talk to you about. Soon New York is going to be surrounded by states that are legalizing recreational marijuana. Yet our state has some of the most restrictive laws on medical marijuana, not allowing prescriptions for stress or using edibles. Why isn't New York more progressive on the use of medical marijuana? Well, medical marijuana, we are now. We, we have, we're not for years. Uh, Mr. Molinaro voted against medical marijuana. He opposes it. Many members of the legislature stopped it for many, many years. That's why we didn't do it earlier, because my opponent voted against it as well as others. Uh, we now have medical marijuana. I believe it's helped many, many people. Uh, the next question that you're asking is legalizing uh, overall recreational marijuana because it's going to be, it's supposed to no, be legal. I guess I wonder why you don't ease up on the medical marijuana issues so that they get the people who need it for stress and other things can get it. The people who want to have edibles because it's easier can get it now before you legalize yeah, it. Yeah, well, I think you should ask my opponent why he voted against it because we now have it uh, and we have to obviously make sure there are controls because it's medical marijuana. It's not to sell on the street corner. Uh, but you should ask my opponent why he opposed it. I absolutely support the expansion of medical marijuana uh, so that uh, patients that need access can get it. This state is You didn't horrible. vote against it? I, sir, I've been in the state legislature for decades, so let's get... You into, didn't vote against medical marijuana? In, in 2018, uh, I support the expansion of access for medical purposes. That means he voted there are, against Excuse it. me, sir. I, Did you support you're, medical you're marijuana like when, you, when you were in the assembly? Uh, Marcia, if I could just Governor, finish. Let's let him finish the I question. absolutely support the expansion of medical marijuana for those that need it. Uh, there are so many who can't access it because of the, the overburdensome regulation that this state puts in place. But only five months ago, the governor uh, uh, actually had the same position I do on legalization, but in the midst of a Democratic primary, decided to have your Department of Health, the New York State's Department of Health, change its position. When I'm governor, we don't make decisions based on political expedience. We do it based on science, data, and fact. Okay, and yeah. time is up, and you get the yeah, next but that, question. But that, just governor, thank you. Marcia, that is not, a, it is not <clears throat> truthful. It is truthful. Uh, Mr. Molin, Hour, did not support medical marijuana a decade once again. Ago. A decade ago. Oh, so you didn't support it? I support the expansion of medical you marijuana said today, today. But today. you didn't when you were in the legislature, which was my point, and you said no. So you lied. But that's okay. It's not I the first time. I didn't. Okay. You do it well. We're going to go to the Second, next question. I did not have the health department change their opinion. You certainly I did. I asked for a study for the first time ever, and they came up with a study. And they rushed it in the and midst of a Democratic go to the next Okay. Question. Truth matters, Mark. It does, yes. And here's a question for you. Education is critical to the democratic process and a growing economy. What solutions would you offer to troubled school districts like the one in Hempstead, Long Island, where they spend the same amount as an average school district, but the high school graduation rate, as revealed in a CBS2 documentary, is a dismal 37 percent. Yeah, the, the, the education statewide is, is so dictated from Albany down that school districts and teachers don't have the latitude to, to establish outcomes and then achieve success. So I believe in devolving some of that decision making so that school districts, parents and teachers have the relationship necessary, establish outcomes, and then create, by the way, a curriculum that gets kids inspired to learn. That includes, by the way, investing in vocational training and technical training so that, so that kids who learn differently have that opportunity. Also, it means reviewing our financial structure, the way in which 
we fund education so that we don't uh, continue to see failing schools not get the resources they need. But our education system was once great when there was a symbiotic relationship between family, community, and, and business and education. We need to ensure that educational outcomes align with economic needs and economic goals. The other is that this state has perpetuated a separate but unequal form of education, general ed and special ed. I believe in integrating that because those who are living with special education needs, those living with developmental disabilities are being left behind and parents are being forced to, to advocate with full hand-on combat to receive services. So that's a, that's a way to reinvigorate and to inspire kids to learn. Governor, I suspect you have a little bit of a rebuttal. You've been taking a lot of notes. Uh, yeah. Uh, look, 30 seconds. The, uh, it, it's nice to speak in flowery language about how you want to help things. Uh, but the truth is the extreme conservative wing that Mr. Molinaro, Mr. Trump represent exclude everyone. They're anti-woman. They're anti-LGBTQ. He would even put women in shackles. It's untrue, sir. Uh, that's, I, you know, that's, also, that's untrue. That is untrue, and you continue. Can I to finish? No, you can't. May in I fact, finish? In fact, you can, <laughs> I can't. Well, you, you don't make the rules. You've interrupted me every time I've spoken, We'll sir. do your shackle question in one is, second, okay? And... Uh, the Trump administration has not been providing the assistance they need for education. We have a terrible education equity gap where we have richer districts who have one level of funding and poorer districts that have another level of funding. And that is not what New York is all about. On the question of shackles, there was a bill. There was no question of shackles. There was a bill that you voted for that said uh, inmate female inmates could be shackled to a gurney during childbirth. Listen, there were significant concerns regarding individual safety, but I find it highly, highly uh, a hypocritical of you to be lecturing me about women's issues. With all due respect, sir, when women spoke up in your administration, when, when they were being harassed by senior staff, what did this administration do? They, they dismissed one woman and they had another one speak, have another one assigned to a, a hall closet. By the way, when sexual harassment policy was being crafted, you wouldn't even allow the, the, the one female leader of the state legislature to be a part of the conversation. And you stood shoulder to shoulder with people like Shelly Silver, Jeff Klein, Sam Hoyt, yeah. and Vito Lopez. And sir, when victims asked for public hearings, you said there's no need. No need? Albany is a cesspool of bad behavior. And when I'm governor, there's going to be more, yeah. more than just hearings. We're going to enforce yeah. the law so that yeah. men don't prey on women. Yeah. You're about fairy tales. You voted for a bill that shackled a woman to a gurney during childbirth. What kind of person would do that? This extreme conservative divisive cancer that you, you have brought to this state with Washington. You put children in cages in Washington and you shackle women to gurneys sir, in New York. Is, that is a, We're that is, not going to let that happen. Sir, That's that not is, who we okay, are as a people. Move on. That is a it's brief, not what that we is believe. A, that is a it's wonderful. It's disrespectful to women. It's disgusting to the values of this country to take, have a president take babies out of the arms of mothers and put them in cages and shackle women. Where are you? Where do you think you want to take this country and stay? Sir, in 1997, please. In 1997, a four year old girl and her mother were raped in my hometown. That has seared, seared my memory, so sir. So you want to shackle the I women? I absolutely to a do not, sir. I do not, sir. And you know better than that. But then why did you vote for the bill? I, you absolutely understood and exactly governor why Patterson, did you vote I, for the bill governor patterson explained the same concerns which were addressed and i support i support what he did that, to ensure that those women that that are in that are violent that are, is a lie it is At, not a lie 201 legislators only 20 voted for it you were one of 20 out of 200. That's what you call extreme, my friend. It is, it is. In your own part. All right, well, we're going to move on now. Uh, this next one goes to you, Governor. Mayor de Blasio has been dragging his feet in approving new charter schools. Do you believe in charter schools? And how would you get the mayor to increase space in city buildings? for charter schools. I will sit down and we will have a bottle of wine, the mayor and I. You and the and mayor are going to break bread and drink gonna wine? We're going to break bread. We're oh, going to have please. a plate of pasta. Why? We're going to have a plate of pasta. We're going to have a bottle of wine. We're going to talk about it. The mayor was with me election schools? night. Forget the mayor. Do you uh, believe in charter schools? So everything is lovey-dovey. The I support charter schools. I support choice in education. I support public education and public charter schools because we need choice. Uh, but primarily, 98% of our children 
go to public schools. And that's where we need funding and equity uh, funding. So do you think there should be funding. more charter schools? I support charter schools, yes, I always have. Okay, Mr. Molinaro. I support charter schools and I support choice. I also support ensuring that our education produces real outcomes. And what we've seen across upstate New York and across uh, uh, much, of, uh, much of the state is the deterioration of an education system because it's handcuffed uh, by Albany bureaucracy. We have to more effectively work to, to give freedom and latitude at the local level uh, so that teachers can teach and students have opportunities to learn. It means ripping out common core and focusing effectively uh, on setting standards at the local level. Uh, uh, tying educational outcomes with economic needs and ensuring that we re reinvest in special education. Okay, the next question is from Rich. So this question really is for both of you. Okay. Politics today echo with insults, accusations, and disrespect. Even knowing that going negative is often successful, do you ever feel a need to elevate the conversation or do nice guys finish last? Mr. Molinaro, why don't you go first? Uh, I was first elected to office as a 19-year-old. Um, I served in a, in a small village in upstate New York uh, where you run without party affiliation. I spent every day of my adult life trying to get people to work together to solve problems. Uh, as governor of the state of New York, uh, I absolutely want to ensure uh, that we tone down the rhetoric, that we stop the escalation of hate, anger, and violence, uh, and that we do more. We do more to bring people together to solve the, the important problems that face us. That means collaborating, not dictating. It means ending the bullying and the threatening and the dismissal of those with whom we might disagree. That's what I think leaders do. And as governor of the state of New York, I'm going to lift us up. I'm going to lift us up to confront the challenges that face the people of the state of New York by toning it down and working across party lines. Anybody who has a stake in the game should have an opportunity to sit at the table. The governor only four years ago said, if you were too far right of center, you have no place in New York. Well, I would say to my Democratic friends, if you're too far left of center, you have every place in New York. That at the end of the day, when we put aside our differences to work honestly and earnestly towards solving problems, we can absolutely overcome any challenges. This is the greatest state in the greatest nation the world has ever known. Yeah, uh, I think those are beautiful flower, flowery words. I think it's the exact opposite of everything he represents and Trump represents. Un untrue. I think what your Trump continue, and your these continued effort, sir. He didn't come to my bachelor party. He came uh, to yours. Yeah, I don't support him politically. You do. I think what they are doing is reprehensible, and there are no nice words to take care of this. You're against a woman's right to choose. He voted five times against equal pay for a woman. He voted to put a woman in shackles. He voted nine times against members of the LGBTQ community. He voted three times against marriage equality. They want to end health care for poor people. That is they're untrue. They're putting children that in cages. That is untrue. In, that is untrue. In, you are uh, assigning They're putting you children in... Let you, me you, finish, no, Mark. When are you going to stop finish. lying? They when put, are you going to stop lying, You're sir? not putting children in cages? I am not, sir, and I never okay. would. And Trump didn't? That, Mr. Yeah. Governor, we Governor, have an I have objected to those policies. That is abusing Marcia, people. What, Governor, Governor. Let's and you continue, and 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 you continue to misrepresent. Right, let me, may I finish? No, you continue and to misrepresent. you have a program where they will hurt the economic viability of this state with salt. You which have is going to raise taxes 30%. My fiscal conservative friends are going to raise Governor. state taxes 30%. Rich, I'm here to fight for New Yorkers. I am a New Yorker. Their rights are being abused. This is a divisive cancer that these people have brought. And we you have, have to win November it. 6th. You and have escalated you, it's it. It's not just Democrats. You're going to see a lot of mo Republican moderates come out, a lot of independents come out and say, I don't want this hate. I don't want this anger. I don't want this division. This is not who we're about. Governor, we're going to give Mr. Molinaro 15 seconds. You have sought to escalate it. You have sought to escalate it. And, sir, your description of my life and record is so dishonest uh, that, it's, that it's absolutely shameful. It just is. We, uh, there, there, really, there are no words to describe uh, how... how, how you supported Trump. Okay, you, okay, on this gonna, show, right, you said it. I gave you each more time. We're going to move on. You just said it yourself. On. We are moving Live on. with your decision.
We're moving on. Mr. Molinaro, how people express their sexual identity has major social and financial implications. President Trump wants to change the definition of transgenders to roll back protections under federal civil rights law. He wants to identify people's sex by the genitalia they're born with. Do you support that or not? Well, I don't support rolling back the protections uh, for individuals uh, uh, regardless uh, of, uh, of their gender expression. And certainly with all due respect to the governor, my position on same-sex marriage was the same uh, as Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama's at the time. The day it became law was the day I celebrated it as a civil right. And as governor of the state of New York, I will absolutely defend the individual rights and freedoms of New Yorkers without hesitation. It's my job, and it is the job of the governor to, to, to enforce Can all of the laws. Roe v. Wade? Not, I, I support that it is settled law and will defend that. It's not settled law. It, it is, law. sir. It okay. has been settled no, law. it is since not settled law. Sir, it has been Kavanaugh settled law. Kavanaugh says Governor, it's Governor, not we settled law. Settled. Governor, we have well, to let him finish. finish. It is settled law in the state of New York, and I will absolutely defend it. But it, it, is, it is entirely hypocritical for the governor to suggest uh, uh, what he's suggesting. I absolutely will defend the law. Uh, this governor has allowed individuals in his own administration to bend the rules. In fact, even the smallest things, Governor, he had the Department of Transportation employees handing out campaign pain literature at a parade when when you wanted to ensure that uh, uh, I love New York signs Mr. filtered Bonner, the, he, bent the, he bent the, excuse me he bent the rules and procurement to allow things to happen Marshall, that are not permitted or, 15 seconds okay uh, first of all uh, you are wrong when you say Roe v Wade is settled law Kavanaugh said it's not settled law the Supreme Court could change it we would then have to change it in New York. You'd have to defend we, it in New York, as no, I would. No, no, yes, sir, you would. No, no. We yes, have, it is settled law okay, in the state okay, of Wisconsin. Okay, we have to change. 15 seconds we have to up, change. Governor, no, no, no. Excuse moving me, Marsha. We, we have to change on. it. You opposed. You did the same thing that Trump did when you voted against gender. That was against transgender Governor, people, to, and which, that's what which Trump lamb, did. Which has the next question? You did the same thing. <laughs> Governor, um... You reportedly like to say the Buffalo Bills are the only true New York pro football team. Is that, is that accurate? Never, never, never said that. Well, you get me, the Giants and the Jets will crucify me. I said, I ask people, what is the only New York team that plays in New York? That's the Buffalo Bills. All right. Close enough. So, for the past 46 years, the Bills have been playing home games in the same stadium in the Buffalo suburb of Orchard Park. There is no question they need a new stadium, and it'll cost over a billion dollars. Our question is, should New York State pay for the new Bill Stadium or let Erie County and the team owner foot that bill? I'm not at the new stadium point yet. Uh, we worked very hard to keep the Bills. We've worked very hard in upstate New York. Out migration was a very big problem for many years. Buffalo was sort of the epicenter of it. We've actually turned it around. The population in Buffalo went up. Young people going to Buffalo went up. Jobs are up. Unemployment is down. Home values are up. Keeping the Buffalo Bills there is very important. And we worked very hard. Mr. Wilson, the owner, passed away. The Pagulas bought it. We invested in the stadium. It's about 1,600 jobs to keep the bills. There's a great psychic value. I love the bills, but I'm not at a new stadium. Okay, do you have you have 15 seconds? Well, as a lifelong really Giants fan, it, 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 I, I, I don't want anyone to think I don't support the Bills. I'm not I'm not ready to embrace a, a new stadium. But with all due respect, sir, your policies have hollowed out the state of uh, upstate New York. We lead the nation in losing population to any every other state in America. Uh, d in fact, lead the nation despite uh, 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 only the state of Alaska, I think, outpaces us. But there are whole communities being hollowed out because the economic development policies uh, that you have embraced have in, have produced more indictments than they produced real jobs okay we're going to go now no, no. to our Marcia, we're going to go now to our lightning round we're running well, out of time governor we i know you have a lot more to say jobs. Governor, there are more jobs you have in new york today don't than make me ever punch you out 70 percent of those jobs <laughs> Marcia, Marcia, 70, don't make me beat you up we're going to the lightning Marcia, round 70 70 percent 70 percent of those jobs have been downstate Mr. in Monaro. fact because of a de because of a decrease in population upstate we have a low we, we have okay. less people yeah. and therefore less unemployment we so. turned it around no, we are going to our, what okay. we call our lightning, lightning round or short answers. Short answers. Are we good so, at that? So, Governor, if you won the lottery, what was the first thing you would buy? One word. 
The first thing I would buy, yeah, I uh, put it in a trust fund for my kids. Mr. Molinaro, I put it towards my children's education. So, Mr. Molinaro, is Dutchess County upstate or downstate? Uh, it is where upstate meets downstate. Good answer. How about <laughs> you, Governor? Uh, I'll take more <laughs> Okay, so we agree. <laughs> so, Governor, if and when you deliver our state of the state message, what would be your ideal room temperature? Sixty-nine degrees. Sixty-nine degrees. And how about you? If you deliver the state of the state. What 68 degrees, and I'll be delivering it in the assembly chambers. <laughs> okay, Governor. Right back with the legislation. You say you're a sausage aficionado. Yes. So besides Italian sausage, what do you like? I like uh, kielbasa, Ooh. but I am, I do prefer Italian sausage. I'm true to my heritage and my grandmother's uh, and my mother's. And you, sir? We're having a sausage question. I, I love, I always loved my grandmother's Italian sausage. Okay, so here we go. Governor, what song personifies you or your campaign, and can you sing a few bars? Empire State of Mind, I'm not singing. Oh, come on. No. You can do it. No. Oh, you're a coward. In okay. the shower, I can do it. Okay, Mr. Molinaro, what Don't song? Don't stop believing, but I'm not singing. <laughs> come on. Agreement. No, Look at no, no. Thank you. Thanks. I really, I, I, I'm having a hard enough time making it through the debate. I don't want to sing. <laughs> Can't I get you to sing just a few bars of Empire State of Mind? Oh, that's a, that's a campaign killer. All right, fine. We're going to go to the end of the debate. Unless you come to the show. All right, we're done. Candidates, we'd like to thank you both for a very, very spirited debate. I'm Marcia Kramer with Rich Lamb. A reminder, Election Day is Tuesday, November 6th. And for more information on the candidates, go to CBSNewYork.com. Thank you for joining us tonight for a very, very spirited debate.